Hello, my first baby. <laughs> this is a rather special one, and it goes to His Excellency Dr. Julius Madabio, the President of Syria. <laughs> Dr. Julius Madabil was born on May 12, 1964. He is a Sierra Leonean politician and also the current president of Sierra Leone since April 4, 2018. He is a retired brigadier general in the Sierra Leonean army and was the military head of state of Sierra Leone from January 16, 1996 to March 29, 1996 in the military junta government known as the NPRC. As the candidate of the main opposition, Sierra Leone People's Party, Bill defeated Samuro Kamara of the ruling All the People's Congress <laughs> in the runoff vote of the 2018 Sierra Leone presidential election with 51.8% of votes to Kamara's 48.2%. International and local observers declared the election free and fair. Bill succeeded Ernest by Koroma as president. President Bio was the SLPP presidential candidate in the 2012 presidential election, but received 37% of the vote as he was defeated by incumbent president Ernest by Koroma, who won 58% of the votes. As the military head of state, Bio returned Syria alone to a democratically elected government when he handed power to Ahmad Dijan Kabar of the Sierra Leone People's Party, followed Kabar's victory in the 1996 Sierra Leone presidential election. Upon retiring from the military in 1996, Bill moved to the United States, where he was granted political asylum, and he did not visit Sierra Leone from the United States until 2005. Bill has a master's degree in international affairs from the American University in Washington, D.C. He's also a cadet graduate from Sierra Leone's prestigious Benguema Military Academy. Bill is a practicing Roman Catholic Christian, although his wife, First Lady Fatima Bill, is a practicing Muslim. Julius Madame Bill was elected president of Sierra Leone in a runoff election held on May 31, 2018. In his first month in office, Bill became the first Sierra Leone president to introduce free education through executive order for primary and secondary school students in public schools throughout Sierra Leone, starting the next school year in the fall of 2018. Bill has also eliminated application fees for students in government-run public universities across Sierra Leone. It has been observed that within two years in office as president, his administration has taken tangible actions on promises around accountability and anti-corruption, as well as creating the enabled environment for youths and the vulnerable to thrive, including women in Sierra Leone. Bill opened a review and audit of all government mining contracts, ministry departments, and other government agencies in the immediate past governments of Ernest by Corona. In his first two months in office, Bill sacked all of Sierra Leone's ambassadors and permanent representatives abroad in the immediate past government of Ernest by Koroma. In his first two months in office, he also appointed his cabinet ministers, including the appointment of an opposition leader, Charles Magai, who served briefly as the country's attorney general and minister of justice. Worthy of mention among many youth-oriented projects are the over 70 fishing boats his administration gave out to support about 1,400 youths who live in 40 communities <laughs> across the seven coastal districts of western area, rural and urban, of Loko, Bonte, Moyama, Peduho, and Kapia. This effort has by no small means created massive employment and empowerment for thousands of youths in the grassroots and the downtrodden with 
of course, rhymes with the organization's mission and vision in Africa. In the area of general youth development and educating the girl child, it is evident that His Excellency, President Julius Madame Hill, is worthy to be recognized and honored among the best in Africa as far as youth development, empowerment, and capacity building for the less privileged African youth is concerned. The Deputy Ambassador is here, who, of course, is the representative of the President of the United Kingdom. We will call her to pick the award for the first time. The Deputy Ambassador of Syria. My dear first lady, who I was expecting to come and this on the house in three half. I have the honor to ask the Deputy High Commissioner to receive this award on behalf of our President, Dr. Julius Madabio. Dr. Julius Madabio, of course, is an army officer. Just like I was, I am also a retired army officer. So we are going to go to the next one. He works high in the He's a very inspirational leader. As the presenter said just now, our president has empowered the youth of Zerbio. He has empowered the women. We have more women in ministerial positions according to him. And he is, as we call him locally, the top and the president. He talks, and whatever he says, he carries out. So we trust him. We have absolute faith in his leadership. And I am really, really honored to this. On his behalf. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this award, this award is for the women and girl child empowerment. And it goes to the First Lady of the Republic of Syria. No. Fatima Magapio was born on November 27th, 1980, and of course she's the current First Lady of Syria Leone as the wife of Julius Magapio, the fifth president of Syria Leone. Fatima Magapio is of Gambian descent, however. She was born and raised in Kudut Town, Kono District in Eastern Syria Leone. She was an actress, screenwriter, and film producer in some United Kingdom-based Nollywood movies. Fatima Bio is a devout Muslim. She has a total of three children, one with her current husband. She was born as Fatima Jabi in Kono District in Tikake Jabi and Omar Jabi on November 27, 1980, during the presidency of Siaka Stevens the first president of Sierra Leone. Her mother is Sierra Leonean and her father Gambian. She grew up in Kono and attended primary school at the Ansari Islamic School. She later went to St. Joseph Convent Secondary School in Freetown. She holds a Bachelor of Arts with Honours Degree in Performing Arts from the Rotampion Institute in London. She also earned a Bachelor of Arts Degree in Journalism at the University of the Arts London College of Communications in 2017. Prior to her marriage to Julius Pio, she had a successful career in the entertainment industry under her maiden name Fatima Jabi. In, in 2000, she won the Miss Africa competition. 
She began working in the African film industry in London. She wrote, acted, and produced Nollywood films including Battered, Shameful Deceit, Ibu in Sierra Leone, and Expedition in Africa and the Soul. She starred in the film Mirror Boy and won Best Supporting Actress at the 2011 Zafa Awards. In 2013, she won the Pan African Woman of the Year Award from the All African Media. In 2013, she earned the Best Female Actress of the African Oscars in Washington, D.C. The same year. The same year, she won the Gathering of Africa Best Gap Awards for promoting a positive view of Africans around the world. The First Lady being honored today with the Award of Support and Empowerment for Women and the Girl Education currently escaped child marriage and started philanthropic work at the very tender age of 16. Her Excellency started education at the Atsara Islamic School, as said earlier, and later relocated to London after her escape from the child marriage plot. In London, she pursued her passion and thirst for charity work. Her personal story is her main motivation. She has traveled the world, providing support to vulnerable children, especially in Africa. Worthy of note about Sri Lanka's illustrious First Lady is the niche she has garnered for herself through hard work over the years in the entertainment industry. Our first lady, Ada Bill, launched one of the most powerful women empowerment campaigns called Hands of the Girls. Hands of the Girls. <laughs> Hands of our Girls in December 2018. History was made when first ladies from across Africa joined the peaceful protest march against gender based violence on the streets of Freetown, Sierra Leone with a clear, simple message, hands off our girls. In line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the Hands Off Our Girls session in New York focused on advancing campaign on the reduction of early marriage and rape in Africa for the promotion of human capital development. In Sierra Leone, the First Lady personally took the campaign to 14 of 16 districts in Sierra Leone during the National rollout of the campaign. Her Excellency's fight against cancer, she has taken internationally. She secured the funding of several doctors to study oncology from the Merck Foundation. She also hosted the most awareness raising commemoration of World Cancer Day in West Africa on the 4th of February 2019. She used the Cancer Day commemoration to present to the government and the world the model for an international medical center. Her vision is to have the most advanced medical center in the world in Syria alone that will serve the Manor River Union with international affiliation agreements with some of the best teaching hospitals in the world. In line with her husband's vision, First Lady Bill believes education is key her philanthropic character is inborn, and she is a fantastic role model that leads by example. Her greatest strength is her ability to achieve any goal she sets. Some say it is divine, but people close to her say it is pure, undiluted hard work, while others insist it is a combination of both divine intervention and hard work. She got married to retired Brigadier Julius Madapio at a private ceremony in London on October 25th, 2013. And of course, as said earlier, she is blessed with children. This award for the Women and Girl Child Empowerment goes to the current First Lady of Syria Loan, Fatima Adamio. <laughs> You know, this evening, um, when I was coming here, I thought to myself, 
good to be in London. <laughs> you know, we're in the red list now in London, even though London has more corona than Syria. <laughs> I am so humbled to be here with you all, and I'm so humbled that uh, I mean, you graciously invited me to come to this event, and it reminded me of so many things in London. You know, strolling the red carpet with a bikini as a Muslim girl. That's not funny, right? <laughs> but it is good to change the norms. And that's what we could be doing in Africa today. We are gathered here celebrating one another. The best thing we can do for each other is celebrate one another. Because only us can celebrate ourselves. If it's up to other people, they won't celebrate us. They will keep calling us the dark place, the third world. <laughs> Even though that third world is where they go to get their own living in the first world. <laughs> Today, I am here celebrating with you all. This award is not for me, it's for the many people that stood by me. Going back to Africa after 17 years in the United Kingdom was not an easy thing. In fact, they almost seized me as a foreigner, even though I'm black. But in the last three years, Alhamdulillah, we have done so much when it comes to girls' empowerment. And the girls' empowerment fight we're fighting is not our fight. It's one that will change our continent, and it's one that will build our continent, and it's the one that will empower our children. Our girls, Africa has more girls than boys. Even though boys are very important to us, because I don't want to talk about only girls, because in Nigeria you have to have a son. <laughs> now in the Gambia, we want girls because girls look after their parents more. <laughs> but like I said, this award is just a testimony that at least people do listen and people are hearing our call. I have been blessed since becoming the first lady of Sierra Leone to champion one of the biggest campaigns Africa has seen, which is the Hands of Our Girl campaign. We have not those, we've gone to the United Nations, we've gone to the Commonwealth, and we still keep knocking doors. And um, two months ago, the African Union has appointed me for the very first time, a first lady, to champion sanitation in Africa. This is a position that has been held by only presidents. The first was Rwanda President Kagame, and the second was Ellen Johnson, and now me. Can you imagine? Can you give a round of applause, please? Oh, There's one thing I want to talk about here. Ladies and gentlemen, which is very important to my heart right now. How do we protect our girls when they are seeing their menstruation? Menstruation is a subject that no one wants to talk about. Menstruation is a taboo subject in Africa and especially within black men. They don't talk about menstruation, but it's happening. And the consequences of menstruation is keeping our girls at home at least 80 days every year. Because when you miss out classes for seven days a month, now you calculate that in a year you've missed out half of a time as a girl. And I want you to know it's happening to our girls in Africa. Our girls in Europe, they have the luxury to go into any supermarket and buy sanitary pads. But our girls in Africa don't. They use cloth. Very unhygienic. We don't have water. Now how do you expect that girl to wash a cloth and reuse it again? And that's the reason why when I was invited here, I said, let me come. Because when you are championing a cause, you want a lot of helpers. People that have platform to use their platform and let us talk about what Africa needs. It's not what you need or what I need, it's what Africa needs today. We need to protect our girls. If we can make our girls go to school and be educated and be enlightened, 
no one will abuse them. But then, not only going to school, but keeping them in school and make sure they acquire the right education for themselves. And that is what His Excellency retired when he's here to use my view. My dear husband has got us to Now, the government pay for two million kids to go to school every year free for their parents, but at least the government is paying that. Now, Africa, we need to call on our head of state to understand that if we want Africa to change, we have to put premium to education. We have to educate our kids. We have to not only protect them, but educate them. When your child is educated, they can protect themselves. When your child is ignorant, that's when everybody uses them like a tool. So please, in your own little way, your little platform, your big platform, your super platform, let us use them. Politics is just a time when you are given the opportunity to serve. Now find a way to serve your people and serve them the right way. And I'm saying to African people all over the world, don't vote for a politician because you think they look nice. Vote for them because you believe the policy they will bring to your country will change Africa and make Africa a better place. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm looking forward to coming again and again and again. I am honored to be here. I don't take this for granted. I know that God has given this platform for a reason. And I want, by the time I leave, I want to be remembered not just as the first lady of Sierra Leone, but a woman of Africa and one that serves Africa. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Ima. Just before you go, I would like to ask you how to officially hand over the award to you. So, as we give the award for our first lady of Sierra Leone, hand it over by the CEO of Ebony Ambassador. Joined by the very first Queen of Miss Ebony Ambassador 2016, Queen Kamara.